Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God. Born of his spirit, washed in his blood. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, perfect delight. Visions of rapture now burst on my sight. Angels descending, bring from above Echoes of mercy, whispers of love This is my story, this is my song Praising my Savior all the day long This is my story, this is my song Praising my Savior all the day long praising my savior all the day long a bright sunrise will contradict the heavy fall that weighs you down In spite of all the funeral songs The birds will make their joyful sounds You wonder why the earth still moves you wonder how you carry on But you'll be okay On that first day When I'm gone Dusk will come With fireflies and whippoorwill and crickets call And every star will take its place In silvery gown and purple shawl be all right on that first night when I'm gone. On behalf of the family of Lily Hansen, we want to welcome each and every one of you here today to celebrate the life of Lily. You know, it's not a funeral service. It's a home-going service, a celebration of life, and uh, we want to uh, celebrate that together today. Let's pray. Father God, we come to you this afternoon in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, and we are so thankful for who you are, Jesus, and thank you for the uh, opportunity we have to celebrate you today and to celebrate Lily together in this place the memories that each and every one of us have. And one of the things that we have for sure in common is that uh, Lily impacted our lives. That's why we're here. But I trust that each and every one of us would leave today being impacted by the Savior that uh, Lily so loved with all of her heart. She loved Jesus trust that each and every one of us will leave today knowing beyond the shadow of a doubt that Jesus is indeed 
our Savior today. May this service bring glory to you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Our scripture this afternoon that we are going to, to share together is found in Psalm 103. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, O my soul. All my inmost being praise his holy name. Praise the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all of his benefits, who forgives all of our sin and heals all of our diseases, who redeems our life from the pit and crowns us with love and compassion, who satisfies your desires with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord works righteousness and justice for all the oppressed. He made known his ways to Moses, his deeds to the people of Israel. The Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in love. He will not always accuse, nor will he harbor his anger forever. He does not treat us as our sins deserve or repay us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love for those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. As a father has compassion on his own children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. For he knows how we are formed, he remembers that we are but dust. As for man, his days are like grass, he flourishes like a flower of the field, the wind blows over it and is gone and its place remembers it no more. But from everlasting to everlasting, the Lord's love is with those who fear him, with those who keep his covenant and remember to obey his precepts. The Lord has established his throne in heaven and his kingdom rules over all of the earth. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, you his angels, you mighty ones who do his bidding, who obey God's word. Praise the Lord, all of you heavenly hosts, you servants who do his will. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. All his works everywhere in his dominion. Praise the Lord, O oh my soul. Would you please stand as we sing this song, It Is Well With My Soul. The last hymn mom sang with me. When peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll,
Lundgren Hansen was born April 11, 1942, in War Road, Minnesota, to Hermes and Anne Helgeson Lundgren as the last of four children. Lily graduated from War Road High School and soon began working in Thief River Falls, Minnesota, as a secretary in an accountant's office and later as a nurse's aide. It was during this period she met the love of her life, Benny Hansen. They married on December 21st, 1963, and together renovated a house Benny had purchased along with some farmland outside of New Folden, Minnesota. They made this their home where they raised one son and six daughters and built up storehouses of precious memories. Benny and Lily attended the New Folden Evangelical Free Church. Lily had a simple faith in God. Her life was changed after she gave her heart to him. She shared stories of God's provision and love and peace over the years, which carried her to trust he will take care of everything. All the way to her very last breath, Lily knew she was blessed and understood this even in the small things. She, made, she much enjoyed the community she found with the ladies of the church, Laughter was an essential ingredient in those relationships and found in tremendous surplus when they were together. Lily looked forward to the church gatherings of special events and food shared. She had a gift of bringing her part of the deliciousness and found joy as she infused the extras that added even more appeal to both the eye and the taste buds. Lily's hands were busy at all times. If they were not feeding a child, if they were baking elaborate cakes, cookies, or bread to share. Those same hands drove a grain truck during the harvest season. Not only did she haul wheat and oats in that truck, but also three or four little ones. She managed to fit snugly alongside her on the seat. During those long hours of sitting together until the day came to a close, 
Nursery rhymes were recited and stories were read. New songs were ingrained into every little mind so that they could sing them in church. Eager hands were taught how to tie a shoe and lunches and snacks were packed to fill hungry bellies. These were treasured moments. Her hands found time to help kids as they practiced their piano and band instruments. Also, they drove them to church, music, and sporting events. Whether making their way into a garden of vegetables and flowers, holding kittens, pushing a child in a, on a swing, or bandaging up a wound, Lily's hands both gave and received much delight. Her husband, children, family, and friends filled her heart, and she found great satisfaction and purpose in serving them in the last season of her life. Those same hands no longer worked as she would have liked, no longer able to do countless things they had in times past, but still they could hold someone's hand and her arms could embrace her children, grandchildren, and great-grandchildren, and son-in-laws, and daughter-in-law. Oh, how the little ones brightened her world. In recent years, Lily lived with her eldest daughter and son-in-law near Welcome, Minnesota. During this time, she attended the Bethel Evangelical Free Church in Fairmont, Minnesota. Lily spoke dearly of her new friends who ministered to her and brought a smile to her face. She looked forward to worshiping her Savior alongside her church family. When she was unable to join them, she greatly appreciated their thoughts and prayers over her. Lily is survived by one son, Brent Andrea Hansen of New Folden, Minnesota. Six daughters, Deb Tim Meyer of Welcome, Minnesota. Tammy Dale Schneider of Hinkley, Minnesota. Carla Mike Pelkey of Brainerd, Minnesota. Carrie Kirby Dembicek of, of Helma, Minnesota. Brenda Ryan Williams of Lake Crystal, Minnesota. Lynn Mattern of East Grand Forks, Minnesota. 30 grandchildren, 12 great-grandchildren, and many nieces and nephews. Preceding Lily in death is her husband, Benny, her parents, Hermes and Anne, three brothers, Ardell, Verdi, and Infant. Lily went to her heavenly home on Sunday, December 18th, 2022, at the Lakeview Methodist Care Center in Fairmont, Minnesota, at 80 years of age. Blessed be the memory of Lily Hansen. At this time, we have a, a great, great video for you to watch, and uh, just look to the video. A letter for my mom. Let all that I am praise the Lord. May I never forget the good things he has done for me. Psalm 103, 2. Throughout all of my life, God has blessed me beyond measure. His blessing started in the greatest way when he placed me in the womb of my mama. I know many will claim their mom is the best, but I am here to say mine is the bestest. Train up a child in the way he should go. Even when he is old, he will not depart from it. Proverbs 22, 6. I would guess my earliest memories to be around three years old, old enough to watch as my siblings went off to school and knowing how lucky I was to stay at home with mom. I recall mom and I playing with Play-Doh, reading books, and coloring. She would let me help her make bread. Mom would give me my own dough to add whatever ingredients I desired, from cinnamon and sugar to all sorts of sprinkles. I loved to watch it rise and especially enjoyed tasting my creation once it came out of the oven. Then it was nap time. When I got to cuddle into my loving mom's lap and hear her gently sing lullabies and Sunday school songs, she'd encourage me to close my eyes if I wanted to go to Playland. I do remember being discouraged when I'd wake up from my nap only to discover we weren't actually going anywhere. I fondly recall our outdoor adventures, watering the flowers, tending the garden, or simply just playing. Mom would place a covering over my head to protect me from the wind and the sun. She wore a pretty scarf on her head. Mama was so gentle and caring. Don't forget to do good and share what you have, because God is pleased with these kinds of sacrifices. Hebrews 13, 16 When I was around six, we attended the Covenant Church in Stephen, Minnesota. One Sunday morning, Mom served as a substitute Sunday school teacher for my class, which only consisted of our pastor's daughter and myself. The lesson taught that particular Sunday was one I'd never forget. It was about sharing. Mom set out a couple bags of cookies. 
One bag held a homemade cookie, and the other contained two. Mom asked me which bag I would choose. Well, obviously, I chose the bag that held the two cookies, as I knew how amazing they tasted. I was quickly taught that God loves a giving heart, not a selfish one. Mom then gave my friend another cookie. Looking back, I'm pretty sure God would have chosen the bag that held two cookies as well, knowing what a wonderful baker and cook my mama was. It is not fancy hair, gold jewelry, or fine clothes that make you beautiful. No, your beauty should come from inside you. The beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit. The beauty will never disappear and is worth much to God. 1 Peter 3, 3 and 4 Mom always made sure our outside appearances matched the beauty she saw inside each of us. She spent many of her days of washing, folding, ironing, and of course shopping for our clothes. We were beyond spoiled in her care. I recall many times she placed items back on the shelf that she would have liked and gave other items to us kids instead. She made many sacrifices for her family, many that were seen and many more that went unseen. As a mom myself, I now truly know and understand the significance of such a love. She made sure we felt confident, not only in our outer appearances, but also our inner. Knowing we were beautifully made by our Heavenly Creator, we were created for a purpose, perfectly made. Pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. 1 Thessalonians 5, 17 and 18 I was asked what words best affirm my mom. Simple, a prayer warrior, lighthouse. I listened to a sermon from Reverend Billy Graham in which he said, If it weren't for my mother's prayers, I don't know where I'd be. In my life, I have given my mama much to pray over, and I know she has brought many tears to God. It makes me cry knowing the hardships I have made for her. I am so thankful my parents knew and believed in the power of prayer. The love of Jesus was so strongly taught in our home, knowing he is all we need, that his love, mercy, and grace is sufficient, that the best gift ever offered is salvation. I can truly say as well, I don't know where I'd be if it weren't for my mother's prayers. Thank you, Mama, for never giving up on me, for seeing my worth, for loving me so deeply, and for forgiving me of the heartaches I've inflicted. Your prayers don't go unnoticed or unfelt. Continue being our prayer warrior, our lighthouse. Sweet friendships refresh the soul and awaken our hearts with joy. Proverbs 27, 9. I had the greatest privilege of spending many years with mom living close by as I did. From our countless visits and precious conversations to our many countryside drives, I cherish each and every memory. We both had a knack of missaying our words, but the funny thing was we always understood each other when clearly it never made sense. We shared laughs until the tears fell or until mom started bouncing to find a restroom in a hurry. I smile as I recall when we needed to turn back around after leaving Thief River Falls because we forgot to get our Dairy Queen treats or how we enjoyed our many stops at the Ufta stand and Taco John's until we felt full. I loved our walks around the farm and Old Mill Park, as well as our walks in Walmart where we thought it was normal to spend a minimum of three hours. Not only was my mom a wonderful and huge part of my adult life, but she also deeply loved my kids. I am so beyond thankful to have had those years with her. The time came where her adventures were to start in southern Minnesota. I miss her dearly. I miss having her close by. I miss her hugs and kisses and the gentle touch of her hands. She just knew how to comfort. I'm so thankful my sisters were blessed with her. I'd be lying if I said I wasn't envious as I know the treasure they've been given. She is far more precious than jewels. Proverbs 31, 10 Heavenly Father, 
I thank you for giving me my mama. You must really love me because you gave me the best you had. Watch over her, bless her, keep her in your care. I pray she will feel my love for her. Thank you for blessing her with 80 years of life. You have been so good and faithful. Continue using her, letting her light shine in her that others see your works. In your precious name, amen. Love you always. Carrie Jo. Carrie, where are you? Oh, there. You were there earlier. That was beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Now to all the family and all the friends that are here today, we want to give you an opportunity to, to share a memory of, of Lily that you have. And uh, you don't have to stand up, I mean, come up here, but wherever you are, uh, Noah's going to come and uh, have a microphone for you so that we can all hear uh, who, who will be first this afternoon. A memory of Lily that you would have that would encourage the rest of us here today. All you gotta do is just slip your hand up and Noel will be right there with that microphone. So my name is Dale Schneider. <clears throat> I was the first one that made her a mother-in-law. And <laughs> funny thing is, is shortly after we were married, she, she, <laughs> she said, you know, I know that when I die, you're gonna wanna sing, oh, happy day. <laughs> um, I was thinking about that when I was driving up here, and it's like, no, no, it's, it's, I'm happy where you are, Mom, but it's not necessarily a happy day. Thank you. Yeah, that's good. Thank you. All right, the ice has now been broken, so. Yes. Noah and Benny and uh, Betty and her were going together. She ended up, uh, she lined me up with two gals that was, <laughs> that was, uh, was roommates with her. But that was kind of interesting. <laughs> with Benny, he, Benny was always good and kind to me all the time, and both of them were. Thank you. Anybody else? There's no doubt. You know, one of the one of the neatest things about a time like this is that the memories that we have, nobody can take them away from you. And those memories that that you have, as Dale had coming up, uh, I'm sure we all had memories. Uh, when we heard the passing of, of Lily, and they just, they just flood and they just come. And, you know, it's really, really great that nobody can steal that away from you and not allow you to have that memory or to think of that memory. And uh, it's, just, it's just one of the greatest things during a time such as this. Yes, Brian over here. Hello, my name is Brian. Um, Lily was my aunt, and uh, back when we were kids, we used to have a lot of family reunions. We had family reunions at the New Folden Park or at the Thief River uh, Beach, and I just remember Lily was always such a happy person, always had a smile on her face, was always cheerful. It was al She was always a very, very fun lady. Uh, I don't remember, I was quite young, don't remember a whole lot from back in those days, but that's one thing that always, that stuck with me. And um, 
for cooking. We weren't at her house a whole lot from what I remember because um, I was pretty young, but her cooking cookies were really good too. So. And Aunt Lily was my aunt too. Um, I was a Bjornrud, Bonnie Bjornrud, but I'm now a Hanson, so I got back to the Hanson name. But um, um, Lily's obituary and Carrie, what you had there, just pictured Lily so well. She was such a sweet lady. And like Brian said, her smile and her laugh, I will never forget that. Um, and as I've been sharing with some of my cousins today, you know, growing up here in New Folden, it was like New Folden was our world. <laughs> That's pretty much all we, we knew. And most of the family lived right around here. And as Brian said, the family got together a lot. And um, family reunions were all the time, I think, about every Sunday, everybody showed up at Grandma Tina's there in the house by the river, and I don't know how we all fit in there, but we had a wonderful time, and um, just really, just some really good memories. Um, as far as... Excuse me, I did hear about the Rook games, just in case <laughs> anybody's forgotten. But another thing about the reunions, I, I do remember, and as far as like Lily's... Um, sense of humor in that too, and she was a good sport. Because Benny would take movies, and one that I particularly remember watching was when we'd all been at the park in New Folden here, and there was a big slide there, if any of you remember the big, big metal slide. And I don't know which one of you cousins she was <laughs> expecting, but she was, I think she was a long ways along in the pregnancy, and she still climbed up to the top of that slide and slid down the slide and Benny was Benny was videotaping it then at that time and uh, and he had so much fun showing that to us afterwards and and Lily would climb up the stairs and she'd slide down that big old slide and get off and then he'd put it in reverse and we would see <laughs> Lily slide backwards up the slide and she would laugh along with us with that but she'll be missed and um, you know as our parents I no longer hear the reunions, I'm sure, are getting bigger in heaven. Mm -hmm. um, but let's not forget about getting together here, too. I'd like to get to know <laughs> my cousins and their children. Thank you. You know, Bonnie, we could probably figure out who was in the tummy here. Summertime. <laughs> let's see. I know one was June. Who, who else is a summertime? Or any, any others? August? August, so one of those two either, I'm going to guess, either uh, Carla or Tammy, probably, and um, depending on the, the, the time of summer, but uh, thank you for that memory. That's, that's great. Brian, thank you as well. Anybody else? No, the ice has really been broken, and if you're sitting there thinking, man, I want to, but I'm nervous, don't be. Anybody else? Oh. Uh, this is what Janet had to say. Um, Lily used to babysit me when Mom helped with harvesting. She had such a great sense of humor, and the woman could really bake and cook. I remember having a family dinner there. She made a fancy crown roast and we had no idea we were supposed to eat the ribs. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else? All right, take a peek at the screen again. Winding up to that rundown shack, and long forgotten memories all came rushing back. A rusted out old mailbox floor seemed to talk like the worn out hinges on the gate, 
and the creek rot in the wall. The front porch was still standing, but a storm claimed the back. I stepped inside and heard the north wind whistling through a crack. I thought I could hold together, but it was more than I could bear. When I saw the arms were missing from Mama's rocking chair. The arms that used to hold me when the world seemed dark and cold still ache to hold away the sun as she grew tired and old. She reached for the thousand times just wishing I was there. Now the arms are missing from Mama's rocking chair. Death is an angel sent down from above, sent for the buds and the flowers we love. Truly, it is sold for in heaven's own way. Each soul is a flower in the master's bouquet. Gathering flowers for the master's bouquet. Beautiful flowers that will never decay. Gathered by angels and carried away Forever to bloom in the master's Papa brought flowers for Mama today And all the grown children But it's not Mother's Day I don't have no money Not even a dime But I brought Mama flowers Like I have all the time Every day I'd pick flowers from this pretty hill A small bunch of daisies and a few daffodils I'd bring them to Mama at the end of the day And say flowers for Mama, here's Mama's bouquet that brighten her face and she'd hold me close she'd say they were more precious than a beautiful robe and she wore a smile sweeter than millions of flowers a smile that I'll carry through life's darkest hours The morning light was soft and low The clouds had left in early snow A peaceful sound was calling low It's time to go Then God reached out his tender hand And gently pulled her home with him Brushed away the sorrow from her soul within And I could hear the roses sing A bluebird softly claps its wings The sun seemed brighter than it's ever been And now she's dancing in the wind always been where her heart has always 
always been During the spring of my freshman year of college, I was coming upon the first Mother's Day I would spend away from my mom. Naturally, I wanted to honor her with something that would reflect my love and appreciation. After much deliberation, my mind finally thought up the perfect gift. Little did I know this Mother's Day gift would be so loved that it would become a tradition between my mom and I for the next 21 years. I can tell you, this gift was not elaborate. Rather, it was a simple list of the life lessons I had learned that year. Now, to some, this list may not have held much meaning, but to my mom, it was a joy to read about the growth in my life and to see the woman God was molding. Here are a few examples taken directly from these lessons learned I have shared with my mom over the years. Over the past 12 months, I have learned that impalas do run out of gas. Over the past 12 months, I have learned that my plants will die if I water them only once every three months. Over the past 12 months, I have learned that hospital sanitation wipes and baby wipes look a lot alike. Over the past 12 months, I have learned that God closes doors to protect my family. Over the past 12 months, I have learned there is a last time for everything, and it often passes without warning. Over the past 12 months, I have learned that my greatest efforts will never be enough. The only way to find success and contentment is by placing my full identity in Christ. Without him, I am nothing. Every list for the past 21 years always ended with this final phrase. Over the past 12 months, I have learned that I have always been and will always be right. I truly do have the bestest mom in the whole wide world. This Mother's Day, I will miss the privilege of sending this year's life lessons to my mom. So many of this year's insights are lessons learned from her. Today, in honor of her life, I would like to share a mere glimpse of what I have learned about my mom over the past 41 years. Over the past 41 years, I have learned that my mom was a woman of great patience and kindness. After persevering through perhaps her most difficult labor and delivery, she was blessed with a gift of me. My mom often recounted stories of how from the moment of my birth, I seemed to need an extra dose of her love and attention. Our days consisted mostly of mom holding me, struggling to accomplish her daily chores. During the evenings, my crib was positioned by her bedside. Here, she would hold my hand the whole night through to comfort me, assuring me she was near. This need for my mom's daily cuddles continued well into my junior high years. As I grew taller, I pulled up a chair on which to place my legs as mom cradled me in her lap. She would often tease me, questioning what I was going to do when my legs got too long for the chair. I was quick to supply a solution. When that day came, I would simply pull up the piano bench. During my school years, 
It was a regular occurrence that a teacher would interrupt my after-school play with friends to inform me that my mom had been sitting in the parking lot waiting upon me for quite some time. My typical response was to continue in my play and inform the teacher that my mom didn't mind waiting. Now that I am a mother, I have often shook my head at my younger self. In a recent conversation with my mom, I recounted this incident and noted how frustrated she must have been with me. She paused for a moment and responded, no, it didn't hurt me to wait. That time was important for you. Patience and kindness seem to flow so easily from my mom. Over the past 41 years, I have learned that my mom was a woman who shared joy and goodness. Throughout my childhood and my adult years, mom has truly been one of my greatest prayer warriors and cheerleaders. During my college years, it was a delight to open my mailbox and discover an envelope decorated with stickers in my mom's handwriting. Filled with words of encouragement, reminders of God's promises, and often a little cash to go buy myself a treat, these letters are treasures I carry to this day. Over the years, my mom has received many phone calls from me as I have shared moments of brokenness and tears on the other end of the line. She would often cry with me, wishing she could make it better. My mom would always tell me she'd be praying for me. She'd remind me that God would help me through my struggles, because he always does. My mom told me she believed in me and the power of God's work in my life. And I believed her. Oh, the power of a mother's words. My mom taught me to turn to the giver of joy amidst the most difficult circumstances in life. My mom knew and shared the joy and goodness of God. Over the past 41 years, I have learned that my mom was a woman who demonstrated love and faithfulness. It has been said that those who love great are greatly loved. My mom loved her husband, children, and grandchildren dearly and was richly loved in return. I know she shed many tears and spent many nights awake praying over her family and loved ones. I watched as my mom remained faithful to her marriage vows, for better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health, to love and to cherish, till death do us part. I will never forget watching as mom sat by dad's bedside, holding his hand, and gently stroking his face, praying over him and assuring him everything was going to be okay. Through many challenges, she cared for and loved on my dad all the way to his final breath and beyond. My mom was a woman who demonstrated love and faithfulness. Over the past 41 years, I have learned that my mom was a woman of peace gentleness, and self-control. I cannot emphasize how difficult it was to watch as mom's health declined so rapidly over the course of these past months. She experienced few good days and many more that were simply agonizing. It was fairly typical to walk into my mom's hospital or nursing home room and behold her seated in her chair, doing her best to read her Bible despite her poor vision. She loved to play gospel music on her phone at full volume. These messages of God's saving grace drifted sweetly down the hall from her room. Although she experienced moments of uncertainty and discouragement, she often shared with others that there was peace in knowing God would take care of her. Through all her physical suffering, foul words never left her lips. Rather, she often cried out aloud to her Savior, the one whom she knew and trusted held her in his hand. My mom was a woman of peace, gentleness, and self-control. Over the past 41 years, I have learned that the beauty I beheld in my mom was not of herself, 
rather. It was of the one whom she loved and served. My mom knew and accepted Jesus as her personal savior. God, in his mercy and grace, placed his spirit within my mom, clothing her with patience, kindness, joy, goodness, love, faithfulness, peace, gentleness, and self-control. When God created my mom, he had a plan and a purpose. He entrusted each one of us children in her care. He knew exactly what each one of us needed. God knew my mom would love us to the best of her ability, that she would nurture us, protect us, pray for us, and teach each of us about him and his wonderful gift of salvation. He could have taken her home at any time, but God, in his sweet goodness and love, blessed me with 41 years with my mom. Every day, every moment, every breath was truly a gift, and for this I am forever grateful. As mom took her final earthly breath, my eyes caught sight of a picture collage that was beautifully mounted above her bed. This frame displayed a very popular quote that read, life is not measured by the number of breaths we take, but by the moments that take our breath away. That final moment that literally took my mom's breath away was the moment she truly discovered what it means to live. I love and miss my mom greatly. I have not lost my mom. We cannot lose someone when we know where they are. I am so thankful for the hope and assurance I have through Christ that I know this is not goodbye. Rather, just simply, see you later. Today, I rejoice in the goodness of God, in his saving grace, in his promises, and the precious gift and legacy he has given me through my mom. I am richly blessed indeed. Over the past 41 years, I have learned that I have always been and will always be right. I truly do have the bestest mom in the whole wide world. Thank you, Brenda. Very well done. Nice. One of mom's favorite songs was I Am Blessed. And at this time, I'm going to ask uh, seven of the grandchildren to come and share that song. When he moves among us, all that he does, all of his mercy, all of his love. If the pen of a writer could write every day, even this world could never contain how I've been blessed Warmth in the winter The flowers in spring Laughter in summer The changing of leaves Food on my table And a good place to sleep Clothes on my back shoes on my feet I have been blessed I have been blessed God's so good to me precious are his thoughts of you and me no way I could count them there's not enough time so I'll just thank him for being so kind. God has been good, so good. I have been blessed. Arms that will raise, a voice that can talk, hands that can touch. Is that 
can listen, eyes that can see. I've got to praise Him as long as I breathe. I have been blessed. Mother and father who nurtured and raised, sisters and brothers, memories made, a pastor to lead us. The psalter to pray, stripes that can heal, the blood that still saves, I have been blessed. I have been blessed, God's so good to me, precious are His thoughts of you and me. No way I could count them, there's not enough time, so I'll just thank Him for being so kind. God has been good, so good, I have been blessed. We live in a country the greatest on earth where the flag stands for freedom and what it is worth she stands in a harbor miss liberty calls all have given some but some gave it all so we could be blessed he's my shoulder when I am down The rock where He leads me When I'm overwhelmed The place where He hides me Under His wings He's not just a song He's the reason I sing I have been Precious are His thoughts of you and me. No way I could count them. There's not enough time. So I'll just thank Him for being so kind. God has been good, so good. I have been was eight, not seven. I went to Cloquet High School. Math wasn't my best subject. I can see why that was one of mom's favorite songs, let me tell you. Wasn't that good? The song, the lyrics. Whew. I, uh, I've been blessed to have the bestest mother-in-law in all the world. And I was number two, son-in-law. And uh, there, there's some things that I treasure, and, and one of the things that, that mom was good at, and that was sending birthday cards. <laughs> and this was the latest one. She would always put these cool stickers on there. This one's got my Bigfoot truck, and happy birthday, and and, and I just love this because this is really what we've heard. Moms really exhibited a lot of the fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, self, gentleness, and self-control. And, and, and I, 
I love this. May God fill your special day with love, joy, and peace. But the part that I really loved was when she said, love you, mom. Treasure. Another thing that I treasured in memories is, uh, Brent, where are you? There you are. Uh, how, much, how much younger are you than Carla? Three years? Okay. So Brent was about 16 or 17, and I had just bought a four-wheel drive pickup. And um, I was trying to get into the family. I wasn't officially, I wasn't married. We weren't married yet, were we? No. So I was doing everything I could. I, I, I'd, I'd help do dishes. I, I would do. Um, I would just do all these different things just to try to get in. I, uh, I, I rake leaves. I broke. I, and I made quite the impression the first time around. I, I broke a rake. Um, but I thought this is going to do it. I, I'm, I'm going to get Brent to really like me. And so I had a four-wheel drive pickup, and I thought we would go four-wheeling. And I've never four-wheeled before. I didn't know what that meant. Or did. And, and how far did we go? About 10 feet? Uh, we, we went about 10 feet in the mud and got stuck. And I'll never forget, I, 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 I still remember this if it were yesterday, and I'm sitting there going, how are we going to get out of here? And Brent said, that's no big deal. Let's just go home and get the tractor. And, and I've been in the family long enough to know that you think you're going to sneak the tractor out of here without dad hearing it or knowing it? And do you think he's going to allow you to do that? And in the age of wisdom that I had, I realized that that was not the thing to do. But you know, then when we got done, it, I mean, the, the, the mud and water was coming into the cab, and, and I had just bought these brand new shoes to, to really, I mean, the whole outfit I had on was just to try to impress uh, the home there. And Lily, mom, was going to be so kind, as we've heard, and she took these brand new shoes that I bought and, and was wearing, they were white. And they were not white when we got done playing in the mud. Were they, Brent? Were they, Carla? She, in her kindness, took them and she washed them. Those shoes didn't wash well. Carla, do you remember what happened to the shoes? Anybody in the family remember? I think they shredded in the washer. I have that memory of that home. Just a memory. Another memory that I have that, that I think of often is this. When, that you heard all the talk about food in the house. The, the, the biggest exciting time that I had in, in dating Carla, getting to know the family, was when the day that, that Lily said to me, that mom said, hey, any food is open game for you. Everything in the fridge Anything, you can do it. And as a single guy who loved to eat and didn't cook for himself, man, what, that was a treasure and a half. And you opened up the fridge, and, and it was packed full of stuff. And, 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 and she had these, all these different stories. The, the amazing thing about, about her is that she knew what she had. She knew. She could say to you, hey, Tim, what would you like to eat? And he could say, Blah, blah. And she go, okay. And she could whip that up because she already had it somewhere in the house. I, 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 I couldn't believe it. And, and then when it really became a reality to me is one day I went to, to mom and dad and I said, hey, would you mind if I went downstairs and kind of organized your pantry downstairs? I'm telling you. They had everything under the sun. And I put in a box all these things and I came up to mom and dad and said, hey, do you want these? They're outdated. Well, how old? I said, 1999. Oh, it's still good, dad would say. <laughs> All right, okay. I just hope that I don't eat any of that. And, you know, it was just, it was just amazing to me. I worked at Hugo's. As a, 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 and, and I loved when they would come in shopping. It was the greatest day. I think they had four carts full. And when I'd see it, I knew that, oh man, I like this. 42 frozen pizzas. Man, I, that, I, I just, I, man, I love begging those. It was just amazing. And she had a mind of an inventory of everything. And then her and I had a game that we would play, it seemed like. 
And that was, I call it the chip game. And whenever we would be there to visit and go over, there would be snacks galore. And, and I remember having chips. And then the chips would sit on the counter. And I would come over. And we had this kind of fun thing. And they were outdated chips. The bag was open. And I would go there and take it in. And, and they were, sometimes they were stale, man. They were soggy. But I still ate them. And so we still had fun. Even to not long, a few months ago, we even talked about it. And this chip bag isn't so bad. This one's December 15th of 2022. But it's outdated. But it's an honor of mom. Oh, we had so much fun together. You heard all the fun. One of the things that if I were to make one addition to mom is that, yeah, she was a secretary and nurse's aide, but you know what her real job was? She was a homemaker. She was a homemaker. She made home, home. I, I never asked her this question. Mom, what was your favorite TV show, movie of all times? But I'm going to guess that maybe it's the one little clip I'd like to show you right now. This is in honor of a true homemaker. Are you ready now? Yes. Say goodbye, Toto. Yes, I'm ready now. Then close your eyes and tap your heels together three times and think to yourself, there's no place like home. There's no place like home. There's, there's no place like home. 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 I know that's true. For mom, she was a truly a homemaker. Home today is a special place, a safe place, a sacred place. And mom exhibited that. Her home wasn't in the house in which she lived in, but it was who lived in the home, in the house that was home. Bill Gates, one of the richest men in the world, had a cottage lake home on Lake Washington, not far from Seattle. He began dreaming of his new home. I ask us this morning, what would be your dream home? What would be your dream home this afternoon? What would it look like? Where would it be located? For Bill Gates, he began dreaming and he made that dream become reality. He built, they say, hard to believe, but this is what they say, a 66,000 square foot home that was the size of approximately of one and one half football fields. That was just the house, not the property. Seven bedrooms, 24 bathrooms, six kitchens, five, six fireplaces, 11,500 square feet of family quarters, four car garage, and a, and a nanny apartment. The guest wing, guest wing comes complete with a theater, formal dining, and formal conference facilities, etc. 
Doesn't that sound exciting? It's a house. Not sure if it was a home or not. But this, morning, this afternoon, the homemaker that we are remembering today indeed will give us a little, has given us a little glimpse of home. She's lived in a lot of different homes throughout her life. I'd like to show you three of them right now on the screen. This is the one that I know. This home. A lot of memories at this home. I, 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 I've got a lot of memories of, of this home as well as many of you. I can remember Walker and Abel shooting BB guns. Those little guys, little, little pop cans. I got memories of, of, of Lynn and Brenda and Carrie being outside. And, and I have a memory that I didn't even know that I was going to have of driving by before I even met Carla and seeing the family out in the yard playing. I didn't even know the family. But I worked for Ron Anderson and we drove by that home. And he said, this is the home of Benny and Lily Hansen. They have seven children, and there was a bunch of them scurrying around. Little did I know that that home would one day become my home. And to get to meet the greatest mother-in-law in the world. But that was a home. The second home that, that she had was here in Welcome. Living with Tim and Deb. Oh, I'm sure there was a lot of memories there that she had and that she cherished four years of memories for her and the last home is Lakeview in Fairmont oh I can remember mom calling me after she went to stay here and she said Mike I like my place I like my home Oh, they feed, the food is so good. And I have friends. And she said, I was sitting at a table and nobody talked to me. Well, mom, what did you do? I moved, they finally moved me to a different table where, where, where we talked. This is my home now. And she said, Mike, you have to come down and see my home, my new home. That home wasn't her last home that she lived in. She is now in a home that's beyond our imagination. Jesus said these words in John chapter 14. He said this. As he talked to his disciples, he said, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God, trust also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you. I'm going there to prepare a place for you and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me that you may also be where I am. You know the way to the place where I'm going. Thomas then said, Lord, we don't know where you are going. So how can we know the way? And Jesus answered and said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. This home that mom has today is not any of the three that we've seen on the screen. It's a home that's way beyond the blue. This home is a home that can be ours as well. Just as I was able to call, I, I called the farmhouse my home. 
as well as all you and his family. That was your, our home. That was our home. I still don't know how they did it, but it's still the home. One bathroom? When I first, I, woo, seven kids, woo, two adults, woo. But you know what? I knew we didn't know any different. It was home. It was home. But as we heard in testimonies and in words, I would like for the family and all of us here today to let mom, Lily, tell you and I today what she desires for us today. Mom, the key God in your life, and James 4, 8 says, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. We all have trials and God says he will never leave you or forsake you. She wants to pass on to you and to me the truth of God's word. The truth of God's word is to keep God in your life. To have God in your life. And the way to God is through who? Jesus. Because Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And that is what mom wants for you and me. For all of us in this room today. Lily, mom would desire for us today to leave this place different than when we came in. Whether, whether it's our first time coming to Jesus to keep God first in our life, that, that's, that's her desire. That's her desire. For all the great-grandchildren, all the grandchildren, all the, her children, all of her family, all of her friends, everybody of acquaintance to her, her desire is that we too would be like her, that the home in which you live in now is only but a temporary shelter. It's only temporary. Those three homes in which we see, saw on the screen before us, those were just something to, to keep her right here for today as her home has be, was being prepared by Jesus. You see, the place in which the home that Jesus is building, making, preparing, is that this is a prepared home. Jesus said himself, I go to prepare a place for you. You see, heaven is a, is a home for all of those who have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. And mom had that. I remember when, when she was so sick, and, 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 and I believe it was just Carla and I in the room at the hospital, and she said, you know, Carla, Mike, I have such a peace. I have a peace. She had a peace, why? Because she knew that if this was her time to go home, she knew that the home was being prepared and it was now ready. You see, heaven, our home is a prepared place for prepared people. If, if, if Jesus prepared a place for us, he will prepare us for it in due time. When we possess Jesus Christ and have him living in our hearts and living in our lives, we are then a prepared people a prepared person for that home that he's preparing for his children. Second thing that Jesus was saying is that our home will be a peaceful home. Now, is it 100% peaceful in every home? Absolutely not. Never has been, never will be, but the home in which mom is residing in now, it is peaceful. It's peaceful. It is peaceful there. And how do we know that? The Bible tells us. No more bad stuff. No more sickness. No more worries. No more anxiety. No one there to rob peace from our lives. No quarreling. No sickness. No weakness. No temptation. No sin. Nothing of evil there in heaven found in Revelation 
chapter 21 and 22. But there'll be a lot of good stuff in heaven that mom's experiencing. Somebody mentioned it earlier. What, 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 what timing of mom's passing? Three days before her anniversary. Seven days, one week before Christmas. Does it get any better than that? Than to go home to your husband of almost 60 years and to celebrate Christmas with him. Not only my anniversary, but Christmas. I remember when we celebrated their 25th anniversary and many of you that are sitting here today were there. At the Royal Fork in Grand Forks. Times I recall that day. But it's a celebration. Reunion with loved ones. New bodies. Won't that be cool to get a new body? Perfect health, happiness, no more sin, joy galore, perfect harmony, safety, security. And thirdly, this home in which Jesus is talking about here is a permanent home. All three of those homes that were up here, none of them were permanent. Eventually, eventually, those homes may not even exist. The home in which you live in may not exist one day, but the home which Jesus has gone to prepare a place for us, right here, right here in John chapter 14, it's a place that's permanent. It's forever. Eternal life. Forever. You know, people who are displaced because of fire or storms, like the folks out in Buffalo, New York, where that, 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 Gentleman, of, I don't remember what he did, but he broke into a school to save the lives of countless people because they had nowhere to go. It was a temporary shelter until they could get home. And right here, right now, this is all temporary until we get to go home. So, I think today mom would love for us to be prepared to go home. And she's going to tell us in her own words right from her lips what the Bible has to say and how we can be ready and how we can know and have the assurance today that this home that Jesus is talking about in John chapter 14 is awaiting us. Watch the screen. What assures each of you of your salvation? John 3.16. And what is that verse? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that who shall believe in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Mm-hmm. How about you, Dad? I guess. We got me how God uh, God loves us by sending His Son Jesus out to die on the cross for our sins. How He loved us now that, and how could I help but to be in trust in Him? He loved us for us. You heard it right from Mom. It's up on the wall. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him will not perish but have everlasting life. God's only son went to the cross for you and me, for mom, so that we could be, as the disciples, wondering how do we get there? We don't know the way. And Jesus said, I'm the way. I'm the truth. And I'm the life. 
No one can get to God. No one can get to that eternal home except through me. Lily, Mom, in a nutshell, there it is. The Gospel. God loves us so much that He sends Jesus to die on the cross so that we could be forgiven and one day be prepared to have peace and to one day know I'm going to live in a permanent home in heaven. She's there December 18th 2022. It was her time to go home. To the permanent home. And I would like to close with this scripture found in 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 9. As it is written, no eye has seen No ear has heard, no mind has conceived what God has prepared for those who love him. It is an unbelievable thought. And I can't fathom fully what heaven's going to be like. But this one thing I do know, Heaven is described in the book of Revelation with streets of gold, pearls, beautiful. My mind can't comprehend that. But you know what? The greatest thing about the thought of the permanent home today is to know who's there. Jesus. Jesus. That's the most exciting thing about that permanent home is Jesus. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for the gospel message and Lord, what an encouragement it is today to know that you love us so much that you sent your son Jesus to die that we could live with him forever. Thank you for the gospel message and the encouragement and the challenge from mom's own lips that she would want us that she would want us to keep God in our life to serve Jesus, to love him, and to know that we have that relationship with Jesus Christ as she does. So that one day we can be together with her in heaven. What a reunion that will be. But the reunion and the excitement will be to be gathered with our loved ones, but most of all, to be in the very presence of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ home the homemaker that she was has been an example for us as she made a and built and shared with us a home that's been prepared by Jesus that's peaceful and permanent thank you for the memory of our mom and our loved one our friend our grandma our aunt our great-grandma. Thank you, Lord. May today be that special day in our lives that you would not only comfort us, but encourage us, encourage us with your word. In Jesus' name, amen.
years ago, in days of childhood, I used to play till evening shadows come. Supper time. Come on home. It's supper time. Because there is no place like home. There is no place like home. There is no place like home with Jesus. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for these moments together with family and friends in the very presence of you, Lord. Thank you for this memorial service, this celebration of life. 
that indeed mom is home. Home at last. And indeed there is no place like this home. Eternal life and home in heaven. Lord, we thank you and praise you for the memory of mom, of Lily. We thank you for these wonderful folks that are here today to celebrate along with the family. Thank you for the food that you prepared for us as we fellowship together. Bless it to our bodies. In Jesus' name, amen. On behalf of the family, we want to thank you for coming and being a part of this service. And if there's anybody in this room that doesn't know if you're going home, and you can't say that, there is no place like home, seek somebody out that might be able to share with you further and to pray with you. Upon dismissal, we are going to go immediately to the cemetery. We'd invite any of you, if you'd like to, to join us. If you cannot, uh, the, the lunch will be served here, and we're going over to the cemetery for a short uh, committal service, and we'll be right back. And again, thank you so much for celebrating this day. Blessed be the memory of Lillianne Hansen. To God be the glory. I wandered so aimless, life filled with sin. I wouldn't let my dear Savior in. Then Jesus came like a stranger in the night. Praise the Lord, I saw the Lord.